Uh, my name is Bruce Bloom, and uh, I'm here representing Fragile X. My nephew, Alex, who's now 32 years old, was diagnosed with Fragile X about 28 years ago, right around when he was four. Um, earlier than that, they thought maybe he had autism or something else. There was slow development and kind of a floppy body and some other things. And eventually they did a, a chromosome analysis and found out that he had Fragile X. And at the time, there wasn't really very much known about Fragile X. You could see that the chromosome was damaged and you could see the um, consequences that it, that had for him. And over time, we've learned a lot more about Fragile X, the different kinds of Fragile X gene mutations there are. There's been some uh, drug development in Fragile X, but not a lot. Um, but we know a lot, totally a lot more about Fragile X than we ever did. So Al, Alex is an adult. Um, he's pretty high functioning with Fragile X. Uh, he lives with his mom and, and dad. And um, he works part time, um, totally have a conversation with them. He spends most of his time playing video games and doing some things to keep himself self-entertained. Um, gets a little anxious in large groups. He's got some of the sort of uh, doesn't really have a strong um, knowledge of emotional cues and those kinds of things, but he's getting better. Great sense of humor. When, uh, when Alex and I are together, I have this really dry sense of humor, and a lot of the people in my family don't get it. You know, it, like, Alex is laughing immediately. And so we were, we were all together a couple of months ago, and... I, it was one of those situations with a lot of family and I was using that kind of humor and he's laughing all the time. And uh, so I finally said to my mother, you know, Alex gets your hum my humor and you don't. She says, oh, I get it. I just don't think it's as funny as him. <laughs> but great kid, physically very strong. And um, he knows he has fragile X. He understands a little bit about it. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was that he was involved in a clinical trial for a drug they were testing, and um, his mom, who is his primary caretaker, said that, well, he was on the active. They think he was on the active. They don't really know. But his behavior changed dramatically. Better eye contact, more direct answering of questions, less repeating the same thing over and over again. And then the drug was withdrawn from clinical trial and never has made it to market. Really, I think a frustration that a lot of rare disease groups share. Um, drug development is difficult in and of itself. It's more difficult in the rare disease world. And um, it seems like you almost have to have way better results in your clinical trials for a rare disease drug than you might for a more common disease because um, it's got to it's got to do really well if you're ever going to get your investment back, and so marginal improvements might not might not make it. And it looks like in this one, the clinical endpoints where we had biomarkers or whatever were evaluating it just really didn't do enough for that particular um, company. But a lot of the patients and their families saw some pretty remarkable behavioral changes that maybe are more difficult to document or to be objective about, but um, but Alex is doing well. Um, here at the Rare, uh, Rare Disease uh, Global Gene Summit, there has been, there have been a couple of different presentations talking about things going on in, actually in Fragile X, some gene therapies, some RNA therapies that look like they might be promising and could potentially help Alex, but certainly could help, you know, younger kids in their developmental stages who are diagnosed with Fragile X.